just how much performance are you leaving on the table by holding out? I tested the performance of six different games across multiple Windows versions, starting from the one we all love, Windows 7, and moving up to the current version of Windows, Windows 11 23H2. Let's get to it. Now things were quite the opposite of smooth sailing here, as nothing ever goes to plan. I initially wanted to conduct this experiment on my 7950X plus 4090 system, but then I realized that there are literally zero drivers available for my hardware that were compatible with Windows 7. Understandably so, given that ESU for Windows 7 had ended in 2020. Therefore, it was time to dig up some older hardware. <laughs> This hardware ain't exactly old either, definitely far past the Windows 7 era, but it was what I had on hand right now, so I still encountered a few issues when trying to get Windows 7 to work. Windows 7 didn't contain any XCHI drivers. But thanks to some Windows 7 holdouts online, I located some drivers for the AMD B550 chipset, which worked just fine. I had also bought a new 2TB NVMe drive on Black Friday specifically for this experiment, completely forgetting that Windows 7 didn't support NVMe drives. When I tried to install those drivers manually, Windows would just go on the blue screen loop for some reason. So, I hunted for this old HDD from an old pre-built built in 2009, but it literally died halfway through testing, so I got this other hard drive, which was from 2015 as far as I can remember. And finally, I managed to get Windows 7 installed. Just kidding, it got stuck on the starting Windows screen when XMP was enabled. Luckily, and quite surprisingly, a simple BIOS update fixed it. I got to install the GeForce drivers and... At that point, I decided, screw it, let's just enable test signing. And other than that little test mode watermark at the bottom right, everything worked out just fine. Now, Windows 8 and 8.1 was quite a challenge. Even though NVIDIA had published drivers for Windows 7 two years after going out of support, NVIDIA did not write a single driver that could run on Windows 8.0 or 8.1. Even INF modding the Windows 7 driver did not work. Turns out, NVIDIA had hard-coded the version check right in nvldmkm.sys, artificially breaking the driver on Windows 8 and 8.1 systems for no reason at all. It took many days of searching through the internet to finally find a modified GeForce driver that had been reversed to remove the version check. On top of that, on Windows 8.0, my FPS counter, which requires .NET Framework 4.7.2, simply didn't work. This is because for some reason, Microsoft had also decided to hardcode a version check that prevented anything higher than .NET Framework 4.6 from working on Windows 8.0. 
This is despite 4.7.2 working fine on Windows 7 and 8.1. Therefore, I had to fall back to MSI Afterburners OSD. Now given that the hardware I have is literally made for Windows 10 and 11, I experienced pretty much no issues. Driver installations went well and DX12 only games finally worked. Now, time for the benchmarks. Here's the test system specifications for those of you interested. I used a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and a GeForce RTX 3050 GPU for this testing. Please note that resizable bar is turned off and that the RAM is running in single channel as that is all I have on hand right now. I do not own a dual channel kit of DDR4 as of yet. Here are the drivers that were used for each of the OS's. I considered using the same driver across all the OS's, but I decided that the objective here is not for the results to be as fair as possible, but rather to see how well things run on each OS at its maximum potential. Therefore, I used the best available driver for each OS, which was 474.66 on Windows 7, 474.30 on Windows 8.0 and 8.1, and 546.33 on Windows 10 and 11. Additionally, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and optimizations for Windows games were also enabled on Windows 10 or 11 wherever available. First up, we have the Cinebench results. I had to fall back to Cinebench R20 because both Cinebench R23 and 2024 refused to run on Windows 7. Windows 11 fared the best here, while Windows 8.1 fared the worst, scoring 3,559 points compared to 3,515, which is only a 1% difference. As expected, the results here are very close to each other and are well within the margin of error, the OS not playing a significant role on the CPU performance. In the single-threaded results, however, the differences were larger than in the multi-threaded ones. Windows 10 was fastest here at 480 points, though it was followed very closely behind by Windows 7 and 11, which scored 479 and 475 points respectively, a 1% or less difference. However, what was weird was how single-threaded performance took a hit on Windows 8.0 and 8.1, which scored the worst here at 441 and 441. 439 points respectively, a solid 9% difference from the fastest score. I re-ran the benchmarks multiple times on these systems, but this behavior was consistent throughout. I'm not too sure why Windows 8 would take such a hit to single-threaded CPU performance specifically. Now onto the game results, starting out with Counter-Strike 2. Across the board, it was a close fight. Windows 10 came out fastest, delivering 155 FPS average and 78 FPS on the 1% lows. In terms of average FPS, the difference between the highest, Windows 10, and the lowest, Windows 8.1, results as only 5%, which is within the margin of error. In terms of 1% lows, Windows 8.0 delivered a slightly lower result than the others, and this was consistently the case when I went back to do a couple of retests. This saw the highest result, Windows 11 beat Windows 8.0 by a solid 13% in the 1% lows, though it was still a perfectly playable experience on Windows 8.0. Interestingly enough, the consistency we see here isn't what was seen on the previous patch. As you can see here, Windows 7 loses by quite a margin to Windows 10 with it scoring an 11% win on average over Windows 7. On 19 January, Valve released a patch that saw a substantial performance increase for all OS's, the results of which you saw on the previous graph. The patch was released before I could conduct testing for Windows 8.0 and 11, prompting me to throw all my CS2 data away and collect new data. This was weird since the patch notes only mentioned fixing a minor issue on a different map Vertigo and had not mentioned anything about performance improvements. The Windows 8.0 and 11 data that you see here were collected after the patch was released, so they are invalid and have been crossed out. Next up, we have GTA 5. 
Again, it's a close battle from Windows 8.0 onwards, though we see that Windows 7 fares the worst by quite a margin in terms of average FPS, being 12% slower than the fastest result, Windows 10, on average, and a whopping 19% slower in the 1% lows. The 1% lows are also better than newer the OS, with the exception of Windows 11, though it was only slower by a few FPS. The ready or not results are all over the place here. You may be wondering why I use different versions of DirectX here. This is because this game is a DirectX 12 game that supports DirectX 11 via a command line argument, and only Windows 10 and 11 support DirectX 12. The objective here is not for the results to be as fair as possible, but rather, as I've said before, to see how well things run on each OS at its maximum potential. Windows 11 came out fastest overall, churning out 102 FPS average and 65 FPS on the 1% lows, significantly better than the Windows 7, 8.0, and 8.1 results. This is likely due to the additional driver optimizations that came from the much newer GeForce drivers NVIDIA has available for Windows 10 and 11 systems. Windows 8.0 delivered unusually low 1% lows compared to the other OSs, being 26% slower than Windows 7 or 8.1, and a massive 86% slower than Windows 11 in this result. But I have validated this result after a few reruns and confirmed that this is indeed the case. Hitman 3 outright refused to run anything below Windows 10 since it's a DirectX 12 only game. I tried to copy over some D3D 12 on 7 DLLs I found on Cyberpunk's game folder, but that did not work either. Anyways, the Windows 10 and 11 results are effectively the same here, and there's not much else to say. Cyberpunk 2077 is next, and this too failed to run on anything below Windows 10 not because it didn't support DirectX 11, but because of some other issues. This is weird as Cyberpunk V1, while not officially supporting Windows 8.1 and below, ran perfectly fine on those OSs, but with the new Phantom Liberty update, the game refused to run. Not much to see here either, as the results were pretty much the same. Lastly, we have Spider-Man Remastered, and this game had a hard-coded version check, with an error message stating that the game only supports Windows 10 1909 and above. Not sure why 1909 specifically, and not Windows 10 in general though. Anyways, this one's more interesting, as we see that Windows 11 was 8% faster on average, and 9% faster on the 1% lows. So there you have it! Are you losing out by holding onto older versions of Windows? Definitely. Not only are you unable to play games that are DirectX 12 only, you will also see a notable performance decrease in some titles by sticking to Windows 7 or 8.1, even though it is not completely unplayable. Not to mention, holding out poses a security risk to your computer. Windows 7, 8.0, and 8.1 are all out of support, which means that any security vulnerabilities will not be patched by Microsoft at all, that is, unless another WannaCry comes up, which will expose itself to malware using exploits that are otherwise not present on a newer version of Windows. So while we all love Windows 7 as well as the simpler times back in 2009, it is time that we put it to rest. Windows 7 is going to turn 15 years old later this year, making it older than some of you watching here. It had its golden era back then, making it one of the most popular operating systems of all time, but unfortunately, that golden era has long passed, and it is time that we move on. Thanks for watching. Tell me down in the comment section below, are you one of the Windows 7 or 8.1 holdouts? What has your experience been like holding out? When did you finally decide to upgrade if you did? See you next time.